My name is Jordan Cooley, uh, Tech Liquid Chain. Thank you for the introduction. Among the many things that I do, I'm a master's student at the University of Saskatchewan under the CASES program, which is the Community Appropriate Sustainable Energy Systems program, um, designing energy systems for remote northern indigenous communities in their transition off of diesel. But in my day life, I work as the housing manager for Say Out First Nation which I think is the most important thing to me. The front line of the transition is pretty rough. <laughs> there's a lot of black mold, there's a lot of homelessness, there's a lot of substance use, there's a lot of lateral violence, and it's not an easy thing to fix. And so because housing on reserve is such a complex issue, you have to get pretty creative with how you fix these problems. One of the biggest challenges I have is rent collection and trying to maintain houses that have a subsidized rent is very difficult. So what we've done, which is kind of, I think, I think exciting, um, is we're transitioning to a model where we accept fish and deer as rental payment. <laughs> um, don't, don't tell the CMHC. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're really into making us pay interest on loans. Um, so the virtue of it is trying to create a cultural economy, a political economy on reserve that doesn't have to abide by the market economy for rent. When the Indian Act prevents us from uh, accessing land, um, land equity, we have to basically operate housing as a non-market problem. Uh, and non-market housing doesn't exist anywhere else except for on reserve, because even in social housing co-ops, they are what's called equity co-ops. The organizations that operate them own the land, or at least own some part of it, and because of that, they can still remain profitable. <sighs> so, fish for rent, kind of whack, kind of silly, uh, really into it. Among the, <laughs> among the other things that I'm working towards is by using this land, uh, fish for rent model, what we're gonna be doing is collecting data on everybody who uses their land. Because one of the hardest things to do is um, in the mission to return Canada's land to First Nations communities, uh, land back it up there, we need a lot of what's called rights assertion information. So we need to know where people are fishing, where they're hunting, where they're trapping, and what they're using the land for. And the more data we have on that, the stronger our rights and title claims can be. And that means that you can see here in this picture, um, that's the Sayout spit. Behind it is what's called James Island, or known as Lultos in Sinchothin. And it's a, basically a historic place with the former set of a big house on it. Um, but it's currently owned by a billionaire who's trying to fight Canada to, <laughs> to for Canada to pay him $95 million for it. Um, by what he did, <laughs> is he created a subdivision on the island in order to artificially inflate the price. So he bought it for 20 million in 1980, and now he wants 95 million. I think that is an injustice. <laughs> oh, shame him, yeah, yeah, he sucks. Um, yeah, he built a golf course on it. It's like a whole thing. We're really upset about it, but in the mission of trying to get land back, uh, we need to have really good data on land use. <sighs> which is tough because land use, again, is antithetical to the market economy because it's an abandonment of the, the value of your labor into exchange currency. So by using this fish for rent model, we can get a two different things done. One, we can get people back on their land using it, land and waters and using it, as well as accessing uh, the information, like, like uh, collecting the information for these communities. That to say, it doesn't make the job like any easier like, the other day I got a phone call from an older lady. She is getting kicked out of her house by her son. Um, there's about 18 people living in the house, and um, her, her house burnt down in November. So she has nowhere to go. Um, and so she calls me crying, asking what I can do to help her. And I say nothing right now, um, because the average timeline between um, you calling me and wanting a house and me giving you a house is about two to three years. So, um, and the CMHC really makes sure that that timeline is st stuck to. And it gets dis really, dis really discouraging um, because you're working with a lot of people with a lot of really complex issues and a lot of really complex mobility and health and mental health issues. 
And so in the interest of trying to like be a good person <laughs> and also try to realize a future without indigenous poverty, um, we really have to kind of prioritize this idea of housing on reserve as an advancement of reconciliation because Canada's land wealth and housing wealth is of the highest in the world, but we somehow still can't justify spending $400,000 on a stick-framed house on reserve because we're too worried that the ban will be insolvent and won't pay back the loan, which is not fair. Um, yeah, other things I think about daily. This is in the Wasanich territory up on the Wasanich Peninsula, north of Victoria. Um, we're pretty fortunate. Okay, Councillor Dubois uh, recently passed a motion through the city of Victoria to support Song East First Nation with lateral payments, more or less kind of like a rental payment for their municipality. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank him, he did it. We just talked about it. I was really excited. Um, and I think that's a pretty meaningful way to move forward for most communities um, because stable revenue for housing and stable revenue for, for indigenous communities in generally is how you're going to have you know, better programming, more stable leadership. Um, the current model of indigenous governance is extremely, I guess, deficit dependent. It's like you have to prove that you're poor in order for us to help you. <laughs> And it's really, really punishing to show people how poor you are. I don't know if you've had to before, but poverty sucks. <laughs> uh, and so we spend a lot of time worrying about this. And so it's actually really exciting that they, um, that they put this through at the city of Victoria. And hopefully the Central Sandwich will probably be doing the same. Um, but ideally, every First Nation in Canada will receive their, their just rent from the communities that acknowledge them. And pretty, hard, pretty, pretty easy to pick the ones that you're going to pay rent to if you probably acknowledge them every time you open up a meeting. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I, I'm Jordan Cooey. Thank you very much, Masi Cho. Yeah. <laughs>